Hey guys, Steve here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. Out in the garage tonight working on a project, kind of in the prototype stage, but uh, by the time I get the patterns released, uh, it should be uh, where we want it to be. Uh, it is a motor-driven kinetic art sculpture. You can see that as it rotates, it makes a pretty interesting pattern. And uh, I use a little 4 RPM 12 volt motor that I got off Amazon, and I'll have a link to that in the uh, free pattern that you can download in the description below or if you're on the blog you can download it with the download button on the blog. What I want to do next is get you in here a little closer and take it apart and show you the basic assembly. Very simple. Uh, very simple to make. Very simple to put together. So let's get in here a little closer and take a look. I want to start out with the two wheels that I cut out on the scroll saw. Now keep in mind that these wheels are identical uh, but when we put them on the uh, motor, we back them up backwards like this so they make the design. Okay, so this is quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and I have made and attached a little wood drive wheel here and I'm going to zoom in and show you that a little closer. Okay, on the back of the first spiral, we've got this little drive wheel. And what it is, it's an eighth inch piece of Baltic birch plywood, a quarter of an inch, and an eighth of an inch to make a wheel that has sides on each of it. That is to trap the drive belt, which will be a rubber band, in this little groove right here so that it can turn. This hole right here has to be larger than the shaft that we're sliding the, the uh, piece on so that it rotates freely. So I used a 17 64th inch drill bit on here and the actual shaft is a quarter of an inch so this rotates fairly smoothly. Okay I don't have the drive belt attached and you can see I've got it mounted on the shaft and you can see how freely it turns and that's what you're looking for right there. If you don't have a 17 64th inch drill bit uh, then you'll just have to ream it out a little bit until you get a nice smooth turn. It's also helpful to put a little bit of beeswax on the shaft. The shaft does not move okay this shaft is actually glued into this back panel right here the motor down here with this sprocket which is identical to the sprocket on the back of this piece uh, these are the same this sprocket turns off of this motor right here and I've got a little quarter of an inch rubber band and that is what I'm using as a drive belt now while we're at this point I want to show you something Originally, when I built this, this shaft was all the way up here, and it would turn, but it would jump. And the reason it was jumping is because as this turned, the rubber band would get tension, and then it would let go and snap the piece around. So I had to move the shaft down almost, of it, almost an inch. So depending on your rubber band, you may have to adjust the distance between this shaft and the shaft that comes out of the motor. So you can play with that a little bit. You can see on the one that I drilled up here, I just filled it in with a plug and then painted over it. That's another thing that I'm going to do different once I get done with this. I painted the back black just to make the pattern show up better. But you can see down here I stopped it. And these are three legs down here that are holding it up off the table. Um, this needed to go all the way down to the bottom. To, to look better. Uh, so when I have the plans done, I'll probably bring this all down and I'll also probably cut this top piece into a circle or at least round over the corners, one or the other. The outside piece has a one quarter inch hole drilled in the center and the shaft is one quarter inch. So when it gets onto the shaft, it gets kind of trapped. It's not tight tight, but it's tight enough that it doesn't move. This gear, the outer gear, does not move. Only the inner gear moves. This is just here to make the effect show up. Uh, so you want this one to be fairly solid on the shaft, but you still want to be able to get it off. You want to be able to eventually pull this back off so you can replace the rubber band or the drive belt if it ever breaks. This is the side view with the rotating gear installed. And if you look down between the piece of black and the drive gear, this is the upper wheel that the drive belt uh, turns on, and as you go down you can see the bottom one. 
Um, one thing that happens is when I made these pieces, uh, I didn't get the flanges on the side of the wheels tall enough, and occasionally as it's running, the belt will ride up on top of the flange and get a little bit off-centered, and I've even had it stop a couple of times. So in the pattern, I'm going to make those flanges a little larger so they trap the belt in there better. I've now installed the outer piece. This is the inner piece. You can see it's free. The outer piece is wedged in there pretty tight so it doesn't turn. Again, the outer piece does not turn. The inner piece does, and you can see it turns off that motor down there at the bottom. Here's the back of the unit. You can see this is the motor that's attached and the cutout for the motor to go through. Um, that's fairly easy to install because the motor comes with two screws, uh, two screw flanges that you just drill a couple small holes and put some drills in it or some uh, 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 screws in it. Then I just use a little temporary DIN plug here to plug the power supply into. Uh, this needs to be cleaned up. I'll probably put a box over this and paint all this black also. The power supply is also a power supply that you can just get off Amazon. I'm using an 18 volt DC power supply, but it really calls for a 12 volt and uh, that should run it fine, no problem. And I'll have a link to that in the instructions or in the pattern also. So you can see it's a simple project. The hardest part of this project is actually cutting these pieces out on the scroll saw. Not that it's a complicated pattern to cut, it's just you don't realize how many inches there are when you get all the way around this because of all the spokes. It probably took me 45 minutes to cut this and I stack cut so I got both of them at the same time uh, but it still took a while. I was actually surprised because I'm a fairly fast scroll solder uh, and it, it took a little while. So you may want to do that in two sessions if you get tired and so you won't make any mistakes because you do want these to look pretty accurate before you put them together. I've thought about possibly painting these, but uh, with the black background, I think this Baltic birch plywood looks fine. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it like that, I believe. I may get in there and sand them up. I've still got a little bit of fuzzies on them where I've been working on it. And again, I do think this area down here needs to be filled in with black. And it might even be interesting to make the back stand of this only about an inch deep and actually have this to where you can hang it on the wall. It might look better hanging on the wall than it does sitting on a table. So that would be an interesting uh, switch up you could make. Just use a French cleat or something on the back, a standoff to where the, uh, the motor would clear and uh, then you could do that. Okay, I'm Steve Good. I hope you found this uh, little project interesting. We'll see you next time.